This is the Solitaire Conspiracy. It's a Mike Bethel short. I don't know if it's Bethel or Bithel or what I should... I don't know, at some point. <laughs> Look up a video of him saying his own name. But uh, he's a creator of such uh, lovely things as Thomas Was Alone and uh, John Wick Hex. And uh, he and his team have put together this. They're calling it a short, which I imagine means that, you know, it's not going to be dozens of hours of gameplay. It's basically a solitaire game where you are pretending that your solitaire is, is you organizing and directing a team of agents you know, trying to fight against some some you know conspiratorial terrorist group, and uh, the one of the most fun parts is the fact that um, uh, Greg Miller talks to you uh, in between all of your games, and we'll see how long it takes to get to his face. So, uh, all right, so this is the first time I've played, I think, with three different suits of cards at the same time. We've learned that a high-value associate of Solitaire, Solitaire is the villain, uh, is on a chartered flight headed to Cuba. We won't be able to get a team on the ground fast enough, but we could intercept the plane mid-flight. Blood Legacy, that's one of my suits of cards, one of my teams. Uh, their private jet is fueled and ready to go. DT-6 will pierce the target's, pl target's plane with tow cables, that's my um, another one of my teams, as Mantis zipline in and extract the target. Okay, so DT-6... So each of your suits, uh, each of your teams has got a different power. Uh, basically, you've got your you've got your typical sort of suit, your typical sort of card uh, deck of cards. Going, you know, everything goes from ace to ten, and then there's three face cards. The face cards have special powers that you can use when you play them. Um, so their extraction power allows you to surgically send a card to a, to target, place them on top of any card of the suit you want them to help. And the next required card will be sent to target regardless of where it is. Okay, got it. So I love the cinematic presentation of dealing cards. So yeah, so as you can see, I've got three suits of cards. These pink ones here, which are Drive Team 6. They're inspired by Fast and the Furious characters, which I think is hilarious. Uh, we've got these guys, uh, which I think this is, yeah, this is Mantis. Uh, so the purple cards are Mantis. They're sort of my, you know, sort of badass, sneaky people in, you know, tactical suits. And then the blue ones over here, this is Blood Legacy. They're sort of my, like, rich aristocrat spies. So they're, so they're taking inspiration from all these different, like, cinematic types of spies and uh, and letting me play as them, which is kind of cool. So what we so this is a typical solitaire game kind of like free cell or klondike or something where what you're trying to do is you've got these like destinations these targets and you're trying to stack the cards up in order ace two three four five all the way up to king um i've got three suits so that means i'll be stacking up three of these and uh but over here you know the cards start in this position and then um i can rearrange them by stacking them in order like this uh, unfortunately, I can't move stacks of them, so it's not like Klondike where you can just move a stack together. It's more like Free Cell where you can only move one card at a time. But I don't have Free Cells. Uh, in fact, so where are my aces? So I got an ace that's buried all the way under here, an ace that's buried all the way under here, and an ace that's a little closer here, but this king is going to be hard to move. Um, well, actually, no. The face cards, because they're special powers, they're not that hard to move, except I think that before you can use their special powers, you have to charge them up by playing your ace first. So I can get to this ace pretty easily if I can move the king, but I can't really easily move the king until the ace associated with the king is placed. Uh, a spider just crawled under my mouse pad, and now it's running away. Okay, cool. Anyway, so I just found out about the special power of these guys, though. And so if I grab the queen, and I stick her on a blue card. Wait, I don't want to... No, not these blue cards. Maybe... Oh, but no, no. Okay, I want a different... I need a different blue card. So here's what I'm thinking. If I put this queen on a blue card, that will extract the ace and play the ace automatically. That's the special power that she has. And then I can put this two and the three on it, and that'll be great. And then I can move... Once, once the this uh king lady plum lady plum <laughs> lady plum is charged up um i can use her somewhere else i think i think i can move her to any arbitrary stack i want to once she's charged up and that will free you up the ace i'm not sure if i'm right about that i might have to only put her in valid places um but yeah so if i place her here i'm gonna block the two and the three 
Where's the four? The four's there. So it might be pretty inaccessible anyway. So maybe I'll I'll go for that. Let's do this. So we'll place it. Oh, oh wait, no, she has to be charged up first. Oh my gosh, everything is a disaster. I can't move her because she's not charged up because her ace isn't played. Okay, so what can I do? Absolutely nothing. Hold on, let's restart. Maybe there was, maybe when I was screwing around to show you how it worked, I covered something up that I shouldn't have. Oh, what? I assumed that these were scripted missions. I assumed that they had meticulously planned where every card went, but no, they just deal them out. This is just, oh, all right. So now I've got an ace on the top. So I can just be like, boink, there we go. Now my pink cards are charged up. That's cool. Um, all right. Yeah, so Randall Court says, uh, I was about to ask if these were scripted or random. Uh, yeah, apparently they're random. Okay, so we're, I wanna get my other aces out. So this ace is way at the bottom. So playing a pink card here would help. This ace is pretty buried too. Um, I can reveal this queen by moving this nine onto the ten. Where's the jack that this ten would go on? Of course, you kind of you, you treat your face. Okay, that's buried. So you treat your face cards pretty differently in this game than you do in a lot of other uh, solitaire games because placing a face card that's charged up uses a special power. A lot of times, I, I'll just accidentally make moves that would work in another solitaire game where I'm just moving face cards around, and then I end up triggering their special powers by accident. So let's move that. And then if I put the queen on top of this king... Oh, that's right! It's the suit, not the stack! Okay, so I just wasted that effort. Um, what I really wanted to do was extract the yellow ace. Yeah, yeah there we go. And so now... I can put the two on there. The three is buried. Um, I'm, it sucks that I wasted that one pink card. That would have been really valuable. Uh, so I might have screwed myself over here. So these guys, they reorder cards in the reverse way that is useful, um, which is, <laughs> that's their special power. And I'm like, why? Why would I want that? <laughs> Basically, they, they, they order them lowest at the bottom, highest at the top. I'm like, I never, ever want that to be the case. Uh, we'll see. Maybe maybe there's situations where that's useful that I haven't quite figured out yet. Um, so I'm not sure if I can just put a card anywhere that it will fit. Like, hmm. Like, can I pull this two off and just stick it on the seven? And do I want to do that? I can't do that. Can I put it on a different... Okay, I can put it on a different suit. So, the games I've played so far have only had two suits, which means that the board was very empty and it was really easy to move things around. This is the first time I'm doing it with three suits, and so that's um, definitely raising the challenge level significantly. But knowing that I can pile different suits on top of each other makes a huge difference. Okay, so I still want to get at this three. If I move her, let's see here. So once, when can I move this to? This, it's, this ace is what I really want to get at. So I can play this king anywhere. The four can come off on the three. Okay, so the question is, is where do I want to play the king? Um, is there some high card that I want to get out? Um, I don't want this one, or maybe no, yeah, I don't. I guess I'll just stick it here and see what happens. Okay, yeah, so that king goes to the bottom, but then everything else is ordered to the top, which is just nuts. But at least I've got access to this card. If I want to do that magic again, I don't know. Um, right here, I could get this jack out. And so that might be kind of useful because I am about to reveal this card, but... Here, okay, so let's... So now we've charged up our purple cards. Put the two here. Where's the three? Here, underneath two cards that I can move wherever I want to. So, what was Mantis group? Oh yeah, Mantis explodes stacks. I mean, that basically they'll take an entire stack of cards and just scatter them to the four winds in an unpredictable way. Um, is there anything else I can do before I start exploding stacks, though? This three is hiding, so I could try to get at the three. 
Um, is there a better way to get at the three, though? I could put this eight on top of the jack and the queen on top of the king. No, the queen... Okay, well, let's put the eight on top of the jack. But then... Deadlift. Um, I love that they, they've made characters out of the face cards, and you can, like, read their bios. Deadlift fought in every war you've heard about, and many you didn't. Legends persist that he's fought armies hand-to-hand -hand and wielded weapons intended for vehicle mounting. He got tired of the mercenary sector guarding rich kids and now fights for Mantis. Um, they've all got this stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so is there a useful place I can stick him? Probably over here would be harm... Wait, no. Exploding a stack. That's what I want to do. So I, can, I want to reveal the three, but I also want to get at a card. Find a card I want to get at. Um... This one, maybe? Or is there... Where's the five? Uh, we've got the three and the five here. Okay, yeah. So let's move him here. Boom. So he just exploded the stack everywhere. So now we've got this three, and that three, and this five. And... What next? So we wish we had this four. Which we could, if we could... Okay, so... I, I can get at the four. And then... Ah, the five will take exploding to get to. Okay, so this stack is just going to be a disaster until I've either freed up more free cells or exploded it with a uh, with a mantis card. So I'm not getting to that five anytime soon unless I do something weird. So what about the six? This six is a little bit easier to get to, probably. Um... And then I could use hit the seven, and the eight is buried, so I can't get very far with that one. What about the four? Um, oh yeah, sorry, the four is one's right here. So, so now if I move her to a free cell, it doesn't use her power yet. Okay, that's good. So I could explode this deck, get a bunch of useful cards. I could explode this one, get a bunch of useful cards. Um, let's just try this. It's chaos, but boom. Okay, they're everywhere now. But I've got the five exposed. Where's this? The six is hiding under this king. Is there something I can move? I can move. I can start stacking these guys up. That's nice. Um, I want to get at this six. It's, I don't want to move her, though, because unless I really want to use her power. Oh, this four can go here, though. Aha! Jack on queen. And actually... Well, no, I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? That was, that was a terrible move. I was thinking I was going to grab the queen and jack and put it on her, but that is not how it works in this game. Well, that was super stupid. Um... Because I should have put this king in that slot. That's that's the entire plan that I was pursuing. I wish I had a quick, like, reset. Or a, like, go back one turn and undo button. Hey there, Ginger Puka and Smug Rainbow Pony. Thanks for joining us. Yes, Smug Rainbow Pony, this is solitaire with a story. That's, that's exactly the kind of thing this is. It's even, it's even solitaire with actors, as you're going to see uh, a little bit later. So, okay, so I could put this here... Um, I don't know what that gets me, though. Um, oh, I feel so stupid for this. Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't, wouldn't hurt to, actually, you know what? This will work. Expl no, it won't. It just put, ah, uh, put more things in problem places. Okay, put that there, that there. All right, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, yeah. I don't care about wasting that Jack's power because the Blue Bloods have useless powers. Um, so if I can get it to six, I can start making progress here. So let's do that. Seven, eight. Okay, we're starting to make real progress now. King. So they're done. Um, five, six. Oh, you can double click these, by the way, to send them where they go. I, that's much faster. Um, jack, queen, king. And then nine, ten. Jack, queen, king. There we go. 
I have leveled up to level five. So I've unlocked a new crew. So now I've got four suits. And oh, I've got a new color theme unlocked. Ooh, teal and orange, beautiful. By the way, I should point out the tactileness of this game. Like, you know, I can click anywhere I want to on this grid and it just makes weird little ripples. And you'll notice that the grid, like the whole screen moves around as I move my cursor. Things lean towards me the way they do in Destiny, for instance, um, which is kind of fun. Uh, so who are these guys? A mysterious group that grew out of the hacker networks of the early 21st century. Incognito Limited, focus on disguise and manipulation. No records exist for their members. All right. You're still here. Good. Don't worry. The door stays open. But I'm excited that we get to keep working together, buddy. Uh, I'm Jim Ratio, by the way. And I think I said that earlier, but we rushed past it. And now it's gotten to that point where it feels awkward to be getting to know each other. But let's just push past the weirdness together and get back to it. Okay, new crew time. Incognito, masters of disguise. Nobody knows what they look like or how their impersonation tech works. They're kind of unknowable, really. I think that's kind of awesome. That's how they like it. They're a little awkward at parties about it, though. Yeah, I honestly don't know how they managed to confuse the cards either, but they like their secrecy. Right, four crews available. That means you can take on some full-size jobs, and the road gets a little tougher now, but please, stick to it. We have to hit level 15 and get Alpha Division back online. Okay, so I could take one of these simpler missions that's got these smaller crews, or I could take on the full-on four-suit challenge. Weirdly, this one has actually got a higher experience value. I assume this one's harder, though. Unless there's something about this mix of crews, or maybe they're tweaking something in the randomness of the deal that would make this more valuable. Let's, let's try the game with all four crews. Distraction, infiltration, sabotage, and extraction. Solitaire is utilizing an abandoned military facility underneath the Gobi Desert to enrich. Well, that's the problem. We don't know exactly now. Once upon a time, it was used for uranium, a dirty remnant of the last century. DT-6 will draw away security while Incognito finds out what's going on inside. Mantis will provide the ordnance, and Blood Legacy will bring everyone home. Should be a clean operation for you. So, Incognito obfuscates. Incognito agents tend to leave confusion in their wake. Their obfuscate power shuffles a stack, rearranging all the cards, and placing the agent at the bottom. The power is risky, but there's a chance it'll leave the stack in your favor. Of course, there's also a chance it'll make things worse. <laughs> well, my own choices uh, fairly frequently make things worse, so uh, I can't imagine this is, yeah, will be all that terrible. Uh, Igor Slagathor uh, wants to know uh, what the name of this game is. This is The Solitaire Conspiracy uh, by Mike Bethel. Um, so, okay. So I'm looking for the aces. Got one ace, wait, two aces way the crap down here. And an ace here. Okay, well this is probably the first ace we're gonna get. Um, I can move this eight over here. This, there's a six in here though. Can I move the eight somewhere that isn't hiding more blue cards? No, I can't. Okay, well let's just, actually, yeah, eight is lower than all the blue cards in this stack. So let's put it there. Okay, so we've energized our Mantis cards. Um, so that means that we can explode stacks. That's really important. Like, I could probably get at these two aces by exploding this stack. In fact, that's exactly what I should do. It's going to drop... <sighs> suck, 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 because i am be, you know, dropping two aces out there, but I'll also be dropping two kings um, on top of other stacks, and that's going to be chaotic um it might be worth it though um especially if this jack could then move on to for instance this queen if the queen's still free um that means that i could free up this free cell right afterwards so maybe it's still fine let's do it okay so now we've got an ace up there and an ace here and this seven can go on top of that eight. So if I want to, I can slide the jack over there, but I just realized, of course, this stack has got an ace in it, so I don't want to stack it any deeper. 
what do I want to do? So I could put the king over here and explode this one too. Another thing I could do is reshuffle it with incognito, but okay, so incognito, this 10 is here in an inconvenient place. I could move the 10 over. Let's try incognito's ability. Let's try shuffling this stack and see what happens. The ace is not much closer. Okay, cool. Um, six is buried here, so it doesn't hurt much to put the five there. So I could explode the stack to get the ace out. Um, what else can I do, though? I've got my purple two down here, buried under a million things. I've got this two, also buried. This two's not as buried. Um, where's my, my light blue two? Down here. That's not too bad either, if I can get this one off. Of course, I can get this one off, because actually, this is, this is my tool for exploding the stack. So let's do that. Okay, so now I've got our last ace out. We've got the two that goes on that ace. Um, I can pull these guys down. Um, I can't stack a king on a king, can I? No. Okay, classic rules. It's got to be on a higher card, so kings need free cells. Um, I would move the queen, except that it's powered up, which means it'll use its power, and its power is too valuable to waste on just moving it around. Um, okay, I've got a three here, but this two is still hidden. What else is hidden? This three is just buried. And if I unbury the three and the four, I've got five, uh, but then six is in here. There's got to be some way that I can make a lot of progress on one of these and just reduce the sheer number of cards that I've got here. Like, this five. Can I get rid of this five? Three and four are both buried. Ah, and where's the... Which one was it? There's the two. Ah, uh, this is a mess. Okay. I mean, I could... Okay, so I need... I need to blow up a stack with this queen, and then get the queen stacked up on the king, and start to really consolidate deep, useful stacks of these cards. Okay, so... The question is, which is my last stack that I'm going to explode? I could get the two out. And three and four will still be hidden. I can get this three and four out. Which leads to this five, but this six. I could get this two out. Three, four. And so none of my choices are just an obvious run to the finish line. Um, I'm going to go with the blue ones. Oh, oh it's full of kings, though. That was, a, that was a questionable move. Okay, where did the two end up? Wait a minute. There was a two in this stack, wasn't there? Oh, did it? Or maybe... Oh, it was a three and the four that I was getting. That's right. Okay, that's why I was confused. I thought there was a two, but no. I was getting a three and a four out. And then... Let's see here. So... Let's stick the four on this five. I don't know. Stick him there. There, that there. Okay, so now we're starting to get some free cells out. So I can start thinking of this kind of the way I think of free cell. Um, I can so I can get at cards that are not that far down by moving things around. Um, let's see. So I want this two. Requires me to move four cards. Um, might not be that bad. I want this. This two is gone as far as. I can. But wait. But I can make. Okay. So I still got. So these guys. What was their thing? Oh right. They send the next card. They can dig cards out. That's right. Okay. So. They could, for instance, dig out this two that is deep, deep, deep down in there. Boink, there we go. Okay, so we've got the two. But three and the four are still buried, so that actually might have been a bad choice. Um, oh, so I can at least get this five out here. The six is super buried, but then I can really, I can get a lot more done. Okay, so what we want is to grab another one of those pink cards and put it on a blue card. Um, 
All right, so my question is, so this pink card is, is one I could use that way. So I could make this stack here. Where's the six? The six is way down there. Um, while I'm at it, oh wait, no, I can, no, undo. I forgot, I can't, dang it. That was a stupid, terrible move. Not happy about that move at all. Um, but, you know, I can, because I can stack a card on any higher card, I might be able to pl still play free sell a little bit. Like, there, 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 and there. Oh, that is liberating, actually, realizing that I can play free sell as long as I have high cards out here. That's what the value of the Blue Bloods power is. They put high cards on top, which creates effectively free cells. All right, well, that makes sense. Um, okay, so we can dig out the six by putting her on top of a blue card. So now the six is out, so now we go seven, eight. Um, I feel like I should be able to get at that nine and the 10. Oh, I've got an eight out here too, let's see. These cards are pretty low. I'm just trying to think of, can I, can I free up more cells? So are there, the question is, are there three places where I can stick a three, four, and a five? Yes, there are. Okay, so let's grab this eight, move it here, distribute the three, four, and five, move the seven. Where was that six? Six is still buried, that's fine. Five, four, three, go back. And we're more consolidated. Um, similarly, we can do that. And actually, I can free up two cells like this. Not yet. Um, well, actually, yeah, it wouldn't be bad to get a little closer here. So let's seven, five. Okay, yeah, so I can move this guy, go here, and then again, distribute three, four, and five, move the six, put the five, four, and three back. Okay, the game is actually like coming together for me now in a way that it hadn't yet. Like, I didn't really understand a lot of these tactics until kind of just now. All right, so the three and the four here are still something I'm missing. Um, best way, oh wait, I can move that. 10, king, I don't wanna move these cards yet. Actually, I wonder, let's roll the dice on this, reordering stack. Okay, so I can put my 9, uh, 8, 7 on here, and deliver 9 and 10, put 9 there, 3, there we go. Um, let's move him here for now, 4, queen, all right, this is starting to work. Oh, oh yeah, we can, we can deliver all of incognito. Getting an entire suit off the board is huge. Um, though actually using a community power to get this jack out might have been smarter, but whatever. Oh, these two can go. Um, these guys can't quite yet. But five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Okay, Mantis is in. And now the Blue Bloods and Fast and the Furious. <sighs> okay, we did it. So basically, you keep playing these until you level up, and then each time you level up, you'll either you know, unlock a new suit or you'll unlock some kind of story progression from with Greg Miller, which is kind of fun. He's <laughs> it's 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 fun to have him be sort of delivering the story to us. Um, we've actually been instructed. You can see this is actually an interesting thing right here. Streamers, YouTubers, you click this, and they basically say. 
uh, we're so happy to have you stream your game. You're totally allowed to do it. Please don't stream past level nine. Um, which is kind of fun because not only does that give me instructions for like not, you know, spoiling things, it actually makes me really wonder what happens after level nine. I'm like, this is the kind of game where, you know, I often play small games like this very briefly. Just, you know, find out how they work. I'm like, okay, that's interesting, and then I move on. But the fact that there's something that happens at level 9 actually makes me want to play this game longer than I normally would. So I don't know if this is just a clever ploy uh, <laughs> to get me to play longer, but it's working for me. Um, yeah, so Graveyard Troubadour says, This is the type of game I would play between the hours of 2 to 4 p.m. when my brain is still sort of functional. Yeah, it's it's interesting, because it, it's, it is the kind of game that you can play with something else going on in the background. It takes sort of your, like, your visual memory and your strategic brain, but it doesn't take your storytelling brain when you're actually playing the game, you know. As much as they try to wrap the gameplay in story, um, the two are really kind of separate. There's nothing about the story that affects the way you play the game, and so the, your story brain can still be listening to like a YouTube video or something like that while you're playing this, or, in my case, making a YouTube video. Um, anyway, so I think that for tonight, that's all I'm going to do, but this is really cool. So, so the things I like about it, number one, I like the presentation, like just all this very tactile, moving, clickiness feels really good. Um, and this, it's, you know, not that big a, a thing, but like, you know, they didn't have to make the game feel so, um, I don't know, yeah, so touchable and so like um, active all the time. It would have been really easy to do the same game in a very static setting, but they did done a good job of like taking a fundamentally very simple game and making it feel exciting by like sort of holding it in your face and moving it around, uh, <laughs> which, which is kind of cool. Um, I, I like sort of you know the the stuff with Greg Miller. It's, it's, it can be pretty entertaining. He's, he's a pretty fun and engaging uh, comedy actor, and uh, yeah, and I just like sort of the audacity of doing a solitaire game very importantly. <laughs> <laughs> it just, I don't know, I haven't, it feels like Invisible Ink, or it feels like one of these, you know, sort of like, uh, it genuinely captures the vibe of one of these sort of like techno thrillers, um, but it's just a card game, and it, I don't, there's something kind of funny about that entire approach, and I can imagine sort of um, the studio that made this just sort of sitting around and being like, eh, what could we do quickly, and, 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 and then coming up with this idea, which is just very simple on its face, but then putting a lot of like, emotion into it, a lot of like energy into it. Like you could just sort of do this and sort of like toss of like, yeah, we made a solitaire game, whatever. But it's like, no, this is the most important solitaire game you will ever play. And I just I love I love the audacity of that. So anyway, uh let's wrap up this video and uh move on to something else before I become too sleepy to be functional. Okay. 